is. So that takes me to the first Bible outline. It's in Philippians 4 and 8 and 9. And it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So there's a condition. So there, in other words, if you listen to what I just read, there is a condition for your virtue and your praise. There is a condition. That means that if you don't do certain things, you won't have virtue or praise. You understand? So there is a condition. So we have to, our minds, you know, through our minds, we have to have our minds focused on the right thing. Our minds have to be entertained on the right thing. Because if you don't have your mind entertained on the right things, you will not be satisfied. You will constantly be looking for something that you're constantly chasing. If you're not satisfied, if you don't think that you're good enough right now, then you want to know what you're, you're chasing something. You're going to be constantly chasing after something. You got to realize and say, hey, listen, my help, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. You got to understand that it has to be through Jesus. Whatever I'm not, I will be through Jesus. Whatever I, you know, if I'm not happy, I will be happy through Jesus. If I'm not satisfied, I will be satisfied through Jesus. I'm not going to be looking externally for external things to bring it my way. It's going to become it's going to be through Jesus and what he supplies in my life. And we what and what did he say in Matthew 6 and 33? It says he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. So it's going to come through Jesus. It's going to come through him. So whatever is going on in your life, whatever you're feeling like you're lacking, whatever you feel like you're missing, just realize that if you put your trust in him, if you put your confidence in him, and if you go at him wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, not half-stepping, because if you have step in a race, you might lose that race, right? If you have step on the basketball court, you may not score. You may not be successful. So why do you think that you can have step at God and thinking that you're going to be successful? It's not going to happen that way. So I can tell you, if you go wholeheartedly, if you go wholeheartedly at him, he can supply your need. He may bring that right person in your life. He may give you certain things that allow you, but you want to know what you're going to realize. You're going to realize that it came through him and not through that thing that he gave you. It's the creator. It's not the creation. It's the creator. So you're going to realize that it wasn't this car that made me who I am. It was Jesus who made me who I am. It wasn't this, this relationship that made me who I am. It was Jesus who made me who I am because it's Jesus who gave me the car. It was Jesus that allowed me to be in that relationship. So you're not going to esteem the things more than you esteem the creator. You understand what I'm saying? If you understand, give a hand clap. Come on. Come on. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You know, get this into your soul. Get this into your soul. Because I think too many times we're looking at the thing and not the creator. We're looking at the stuff and not the creator. We got to look at it's Jesus. That's who we got to look at it. That's who it is. It comes through him. So we got to. So we can't be enemies in our own minds. We can't be enemies in our own minds. We got to realize that we have to be focused on the right things. So that means that when we get up and when we when we go through this way of life. I can sit here and preach just on Philippians 4 and 8 when you think about it. So what that means when we go through this way of life, when we go through this way of life and we look at, it says, whatsoever things are true. So are you thinking about a lot of dishonest things whenever you're going through about the day? Because that's going to take away your virtue and your praise. So whatever things are true. No, forget about the dishonest thing. Forget about what the person who did to you what was dishonest because that's what's going to hold animosity. You understand what I mean? That's just going to put you in a negative mood. But when you think about whatsoever things are true, it's going to put you in a better mood. It's going to make you feel good. Whatsoever things are honest, it's going to be, you're going to think about that's going to make you work. That's going to make you think a little bit better. That's going to put you in a better frame of mind. So when we think about, so when we go through this, or is that where our mind is? 
Is that where our mind and our thoughts are? Let's not dwell. Let's not give the negative too much attention. Let's give the positive the attention. So let's go ahead and turn to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 13. Now look at, let's, let's read this. It said, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an, un, an evil heart of unbelief. In departing from the living God. You understand that? Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. In departing from the living God. In departing from the living God. So we, that means that we got to take heed. Be aware. Be aware of what's going on. But exhort. But listen to this verse 13. But exhort one another daily. See, that's a part of being supported. Where it talked about you're going to have to have support as a Christian to grow. You're going to have to have that support. But exhort, but exhort one another daily. It didn't say once a month. It didn't say once a week. Did you all hear what I'm saying? It says exhort one another daily. Daily. While it is called today. While it is called today. Lest any of you be heartened through the deceitfulness of sin. See, that's what it takes. You got to be around the right individuals. Who's going to exhort you on a daily basis. That's going to encourage you on a daily basis. Because if not, you might be heartened through the deceitfulness of sin. See, now that means you change. Sin got a hold of you. Sin got, it got a grab of you. And, you're, and now that you, you can't even be reached. You've been hardened. So we got to make sure that we are around individuals like-minded that can help exhort us that can that can exhort us on a daily basis on a daily basis we're going to stay in the same book Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 this is all about supporting us as Christians so we can grow not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So much the more as you see the day approaching. So much the more. So now what day is that we see approaching? You can, you can say as we see as, as it looked like that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. As, 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 as we see the signs of the times of the Lord coming back. I can also say this too. As we see more evil coming into the world, right? When we see things going on in the world, more evil like, I think we need to exhort one another. We need to encourage one another. We need to say, hey, stand. Don't let this. Don't let the world discourage you. Stay strong. We need to do that. But it says for not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together. As the manner of some is. So. Think about if you're a, if you call yourself a Christian, how are you going to grow more if you're not coming into the church? How are you going to grow if you're not hearing the preacher preach? How are you going to grow and, and, and grow in your faith if you're not participating in, in testimony service and praise and worship service? How are you going to grow? No, you're not going to you're not. It's going to be hard for you to. You have to have support to grow. Last part of this outline, we're going to go to Colossians 3 and 16. It said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. 
So now, listen, a part of our Christian growth, part of helping us to be supported is listening to that gospel music. Listening to that gospel music. Singing that gospel music. Singing it. Not singing this worldly music. Not singing worldly songs. But singing that gospel music. Listening to that gospel music. Teaching and admonishing one another in songs. In hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. This is how you're going to grow as a Christian. This is going to be a part of that spiritual Christian growth. But we have to do this. If we're not doing it, we're not going to grow. We're not going to grow all that much. But if you find yourself in the place of, of not growing, you might want to look at yourself and ask yourself why you're not growing. It might be because you're not doing the things that we're talking about. But there's some other things that I didn't, that I, uh, didn't address that I'll address here too. A part of your Christian growth is going to be your prayer life. That's going to be a part of your Christian growth. Because that's where you can, where it says, that's where you petition the Lord at. You petition the Lord in prayer. That's where you ask the Lord for things in prayer. That's where you, you can tell the Lord how thankful for you are is in prayer. That's where we communicate. We communicate in prayer. If, if, when you get an opportunity, read Daniel chapter nine. You'll see what it talk. How prayer is instrumental. Prayer, fasting, is going to help support your Christian growth. This is fast day here at Ultimate Health Mind and Body Recreative Ministry. This is fast day. So that's going to be a part of your. Christian growth is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness to undo heavy burdens and that the oppressed may go free so that's going to help you that's going to help help you grow as a Christian these kind come not but by fasting and prayer prayer is powerful the effectual fervent prayer the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's James 5. So these things, they're going to help you grow as a Christian. They're going to help support you as a Christian. Then you got to, then you got to go to this. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable. For doctrine, for correction, and reproof. You understand? So then we got to be able to understand that. So that means that we got to we got to spend time in the Word. We got to read the Word of God. We got to read it so we can get strong, so we can know what the will of God is. We'll know what the will of God is through His Word. So when we do these things. Said, if you do these things, somebody can anybody finish it? If you do these things, ye shall never, never fall. never fall. If you do these things, ye shall never fall. Why? Because I I built a Christian community when I did that. I built me a support of Christian community through what I listen to, through what I look at, through what through the people that I'm around, through the, what I'm reading is all supporting my Christian walk. If I'm not doing that, then I may not grow. So I want to share that with you. I want you to be aware of it. Build yourself up support, some Christian support so you can grow. Build it up. Build it up. Because we know that Satan's out there. Because Jesus even told Satan, even Jesus even told Peter, Satan has desired to have you and sift you as wheat. But I have what? There go that prayer again. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fell not. I have prayed for thee that thy faith not fell not. Where are you going, devil? God had asked him that. Remember that? He said, I'm going to and oh throughout the earth. 
Right? Seeking what? Seeking whom I may devour. 